Okay, so welcome everybody to our planning meeting for July, today's Tuesday, the 12th of July. And the first item in the agenda is 184.22, declarations and disclosable peculiar interest. None, thank you. 185.22, apologies for absence, Karen. We've got apologies from councillors Barreto, Brain, Cannon, Hollis, James, Jeremy. Thank you. And then moving on to 186.22, the minutes of the last meeting held on the 14th of June, which were approved by full council on the 28th of June. Are you happy for those to be recorded as a true record and signed by me as such? Yes, Jim. Yes. Agreed. Thank you. Then we move into the full body of the applications then. So we've got uh, the first one is the Albion 93 Castle Street. I think we had this before. Yes, um, Which now they've got, I think, four dwellings. Is it coming through? Lambert's. Mm. Yeah, so we have previously put in an objection to this and our previous objection was that it was an infill development, it was over development, increase in traffic, uh, and unhappy about the layout density of the buildings and inappropriate development for residents. So amended plans have been put in, that's the, this thing, move along. And I, I was probably easier if you saw them up on the board, to be fair, because it's not a particularly clear plan. Uh, so um, <clears throat> the contaminated, the, I've just gone through the updated comments. So the uh, um, contaminated land officer said that they would give approval subject to conditions of a death study and, and a site investigation. The tree officer said it requires an updated AIA the historical building officer um, said that there was uh, no objections. And then there was a resident, um, only one more resident since the, the original one. And um, his issues were um, tandem parking um, has only been partially addressed. And he thinks that the um, tree and countryside officer consultants has been ignored. Um, there is concerns about the use of the private lane and the need to secure the boundary to the north, um, as there's a potential for future overlooking. So um, he thinks that units four and three, the parking area, um, should be moved westward away from the existing trees and the north site boundary onto the private lane should be built as a secure long lasting enclosure with a two metre high brick wall with no vehicular or pedestrian access to that lane during the construction or after completion. And then it's about materials, but he's saying that um, you need to be careful of route protection during development. In terms of what we've got. So let me go on to something that probably looks a bit. There was an existing tree that has been taken out to the gate access, but the, these ones are maintained as part of it. I think this is the access lane that they're talking about. The yeah. There. So. Um, and then we, I think, had concerns about access violence because of the yeah. nature of those who inhabit those dwellings along there. Mm -hmm. Right, over to comments. David, then. Uh, just a question about that lane. Is that lane access to the rear of the houses on Milford Bridge Road? Yeah, yeah, so it's not. It's not intended to be access for these ones. Chris? Chris? I was going to say, I mean, I was entered this last time. I went to have a look at the site. It's not suitable. The access road is not good enough to be in good with the residents that live in the care area of our community. It should be allowed. But that's a planet, I think we raised those objections uh, regarding traffic um, last time. Um, I think in terms of the road safety, 
I don't think there's anything coming further from the county in respect of that. Um, and I would suggest we repeat our observations in, in that respect. Um, so, so if I put as objector um, and, and to say um, all, all previous objections remain. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to um, also concur with the contaminated land officer and the tree officer about the need yeah. for... Just curiosity wise, the red line is the planning area, isn't it? Yeah, this is the old thing which takes in the pub. I understand that the pub garden stays separate as you can pop there. Mm. Right. But, I mean, they've they got the four there, and then they're still within the boundaries of this planning application. They've got the, the big area of what's still behind it. But I think that because it's all red line, it's all the, the ownership of the yeah. pub. So that's the, the thing that's that we're proposing is, is that the side of it. I don't think there's any proposal for any building here at this time. All you're saying is that there's potential that yeah, in the future there may be, that, yeah. That, that, yeah. you know, that it could happen in that area as well. So there's a separate entrance in there through the next to the pub there. Yes, yeah, we're quite tight. Really. It is. Oh, yeah. But I think you know all we can do is what's in front of us. Not the application is being presented, which has those well, four dwellings I've highlighted, and and the bit at the top which reaches into the landlords, that little road there. Yes, yeah, so there's a bit of a lay-by bit there, isn't there? Yeah, is that does that belong to them too? I guess, or is that just planning permission on land that they don't own, which you can do. You can get planning permission on land that they don't own, because that seems funny. That little bit. Yeah. Going into the land, doesn't it? As I recall, the fence seemed to come straight across and didn't. Yeah, I thought it came straight across. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. That's fine And they may have done one of the previous ones in the previous round. It's the, it's the left hand it's one. The left hand one. Hand Renew our objections. So I think Tim's asking us whether we want to put an addition to the contaminated land, which I think would be wise. Yeah, that to you do, want so. to support the the um, comments the <laughs> and and the and the true officer. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much else we can say. I think we've said most of it last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the land that was offered to us for long time, isn't it? I don't know. I, don't know. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> you know more than me, Dennis. Yeah, well, so, sorry, that sorry, plot um, three is quite a bit smaller than the others, isn't it? The gardens. Was that, or is it my eyesight? So does that say 113 square? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 113, yes. 113, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of the way the angle of the road goes. Yeah. It's longer there than it is here because the road comes All right, back. yeah. So I'm not crammed into that space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unless we've got anything further, I'll say we'll move on then to 708, which is our BT so, friends in that outside that west. Could I say that you may want to bring nine, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, all four together, mm -hmm. because they're asking for the same equipment, um, and that what they've given is the same sort of information, design information for both. Um, but obviously they're in different locations, so I don't know if you want to take it by location. So just in terms of, we've got the four there, one is an advert, one is full, so there's actually only two. So there's there's two at. two fulls and two adverts. Yeah, one is only two. outside the cinema and one is down by King Street. that west, what was. Dennis. Just showing my ignorance, what is a BT hub? 
Tea. I will show I you. Tea. Brace yourself, then. Brace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I take it has something to do with advertising. It is. Well, uh, well, it's 21st century stuff, really, because oh, no, basically no. Um, it's got Wi-Fi and everything <laughs> so people can make wireless calls. So it is a hub for calls and internet. And how would BG be making money? Uh, yes, possibly. Uh, and just selling their services because people will pay for services. Okay. I, I don't know their full marketing brief. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I think the advertising is the revenue for them because I think the phone calls are free and the internet access is free and you can charge your phone. With the yes, I, I think. Think so. I think it's because it's like using WhatsApp or something. It's yes. yeah. Oh, well, well. So, there, so, well, so that's image. where they say it's going to to be. Oh, yeah. Well, my well, question so is: Are we happy to be in the middle of the um, performance area when we tried to declutter that a few years back <laughs> by taking the phone box out and moving it against Hughes Wall? Um, yeah. I, I understand you know, the need for it being a prominent way, but I do question, you know, given that we made the decision to move the green boxes that were once there, um, to move them against Hughes Wall, we're now bringing something back in to... I hardly them. dare ask, but would we put forward where they could put them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we could keep the light in Yeah. Well, maybe being thick here, but... Well, I think people do use it as well for pop up the uh, little stalls yeah. for yeah. Um, things. Could they move it across the room? Potentially, I'm wondering if you if you go flushing out it's there, so at least you maintain the, uh, the size of the space. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about putting a screen in where that more yeah. water feature is the yeah. Uh, yeah. on the other side of it, the yeah. side of the yeah. 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 Can we spell from fencing in down there? I mean, there, there was a thing about putting a barrier on there, wasn't there? Yeah. To stop just, people falling off the edge. Just like and put some money to fall off that tree. Oh, I thought that was close to the right there as well. It's a spelling in the right. So, because that might be an issue if we put fencing along there about where it goes as well. Yes. Well, it's not fencing as such as a barrier. Isn't oh, it's a railing, wasn't it? Yeah, so right. that's one of them. Where's the other one? Can I just ask? I'm not. It's probably me. Not. I haven't got my glasses. But where is the actual phone box at the moment? There is no phone box. It's oh, a, it's a it's like, junction box within. Junction the, box. Right. Okay. Because it, it, okay. be, it says it, removal. It used to be a big green box oh, here, yeah. which we moved across the Hughes wall and painted white to the end mm. declutter that to make the performance area on one level. Um, obviously this, so are we going along the lines of um, not an objection overall, but uh, repositioning is required? Yeah. If they put it down near the urinal there, um, you know, really between the, that and the drop-off point, that would be a good location because it would... Uh, be not blocking the stage area and, and it may stay people falling off the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean put it here? Yes. Yeah. Which is where we've got planter at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a planter on the Yes, it's because that's an old photograph. They haven't got our planters on it. Yeah. yeah, so would that be more acceptable if we propose that we put it on that corner? Yeah, because it's all Sorry, Mike. Um, this is our property. This land that it's on is not our property. property. It's not. No, okay. it's not for county council. No, it's not. We have a license for the performance area, but it's not ours. It's our property. Okay, that's a great shame. I mean, I just to me, the question is begged: is why on earth would we want it at all? I actually think the bit that that's on is Brecklands. Mm -hmm. There is a thing. Um. Oh my God. Yeah. Could we get them to give us cheap advertising so that we can advertise them? Yes. Uh, for our uh, dues. We are talking about that as being a facility, aren't we? Yeah. Because yeah. there's quite well, a lot of information. Because we were going to do digital monitors with yeah. Royal Breckland. Yeah. We're going to do digital monitors. And I think that this, they think that this can, particularly we were talking about the fact 
uh, being able to broadcast emergency information mm. and that sort of thing very quickly Absolutely. across it and that councils, councils <laughs> would have access to it so that we at all levels could be able to <laughs> spread that information. So I think it maybe ticks a lot of the boxes that Breckland were looking for in their own digital monitors, but obviously I'm not, and I don't know completely what was decided. Our Breckland councillors may be better informed. And where is the other one going? So if I just if I just go across to the next one, wait a minute. Stuart, while we're on that, could we not put it? I wouldn't mind if it's on here at all. I wouldn't mind if it went across outside who's it? Where's the green box? But I think they'll complain then that it's not in the uh, sight line of people to see it. It's in the sight line of people having their bikes across the school. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so that's where they're looking for it to go on the other side. So again, I, I don't like this location because it starts <coughs> to block up your pathway. You've got a nice thoroughfare through there, which is wide enough to get two-way traffic if you've got people with push chairs going one way or another. Suddenly you're making a constraint there. Um, yeah. I think when we had the mail on mm -hmm. Sunday, it would have been quite busy um, and you don't want to have things interfering with the movement of people around there. Yeah. So that's where it is on the um, on the map. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask, please, is, 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 is presumably purely visual, there's no audio? No, I don't think so. So they're going to pay rent to Norfolk County Council. Well, that one will be Breckland, I think. I think they're both Breckland. Breckland, and they went to Breckland. Um, and this figures in the middle of our main street. It's, I mean, that's what we said, a pink. Yeah. I don't, I don't go for it. I, I honestly can't see why we want to encourage it in any way, or whatever. It's just taking a place in your phone boxes. You can now use these instead of old phone boxes. Yes. You go along, you've just got the phone on the card, you can plug it in and stuff in. We are now living in 2000 or 2022, we're not 1910. You know, we have got to go forward. It's a digital society. Dennis, you want to come? Yeah, I would be in favour if their location is better. And it is now. I would be in favour of approval for both of them. I, was, I think it's a step forward to the town because it's going to allow uh, pe people will stop and look at these things and say, uh, and you know, it's, uh, but I do not like where they're. What well, do you mean they're distracted from their phones? <laughs> <laughs> well, they've been plugging their phones into it, from what I understand. Yeah. So I think we're probably of the consensus that it's a necessary evil for modern day life um, and we ought to have it. However, I think location is something that we would ask them to readdress. Now, whether we go down the route of saying support uh, but we don't like the place or we object because of the placement. Well, I think you could do that on the full. The actual advertising one is about the fact that there is, if you look at the advertising that says proposal is two digital 75 inch display screens on each side of the street hub so the advertising one is the actual design of the street hub and the fills are the street hub and its location so, so i think there's two different ones yeah, you happy presumably you agree to the advert yeah. side and you would object to the full yeah these are like things in norwich aren't they yeah but so, so if we're going to object to the full, um, what is our suggestions for other placements? So, just say opposite side of street. I think we need to make the point that it, we've been through the hoop, trying to declutter and mm. create an open performance area in yeah. the location. So, as previous phone uh, phone box was moved to outside Hughes. Yeah, but foot junction box. So people don't think there was an actual 
Yeah. Red box. Yeah. Would it fit underneath the finger sinus in the middle of St. John's Butchers? Because you've got that black touch right in there. Yeah. So you can put it upside down. And it's not anything, is it? It's a wide area. Yeah, you got a wide area, so yeah, it's like The only problem with that is it is an emergency entrance for vehicles so onto King Street. Because it's not very wide, is it? It's a little bit Still, so sufficient width to get about the vehicle. Yeah, I don't know if highways would be object to that because it's okay. emergency vehicles. I mean, I may be wrong. If we put it out from the tubes, as I take it, they want it face on, so it's a you know, well, it's a double sided thing, I think, so that you yeah, want it at right angles to the side. front of the building. But that would take up a considerable amount of that foot. You'd still eat into your footway, yes. Yeah, if you would eat into your footway, where if it was up on our fence to like this end, it would need to drop. Up. So you're saying it, so you're saying it should be on this. Dennis, this I think, is proposed on the corner. Yeah, that corner bit up there, which is not used for anything now, it's up falling off. So, if we do front <laughs> corner of performance area by Lloyd's, yes. by the water fountain, <laughs> yes, I did accidentally. Now, a part of there it looks very nice. That would be elevated as well, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it would also take away that trip hazard as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trip hazard, yeah. It would take one of our trip hazards down. If we're going to have it, let's make use of it. Okay. And the one for outside the well, We just flipped that through to where you showed it. Yeah. Any excuse to keep putting Chris Hemsworth, the Hemsworth up on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> For the ladies? Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> and that one, where would you suggest putting it? Other than in the middle of Because I was just looking at the map, because it would have to be near the junction box. So. I guess they could move that further back towards the planting. There's, a, there's, a, there's, this, there's an existing one there, there's one there, and there's quite a few junction boxes there. Yeah, so they could either, or they could put it into this bit, because that isn't... It's a little bit higher, so yeah. you don't want to put it on the eggs and water. Or like go above the yeah. manhole cover. You still maintain the width of the path. Yes. So alongside manhole cover. Yeah, I think make the point that we want to maintain the width of the the thoroughfare that's coming out. Yeah. Well, especially like events like we had Sunday. Yeah. All the town clocks could be furiously. I mean, I don't want to waste your time if you want to us the appropriate use of the space. I just instantly what Dennis said a few minutes ago that he'd seen someone in the bus station at Norwich, did you say? Well, along the main street. Yeah, along well, the main street. Um, so if you're getting off the train or the bus and you get information as to what's going on in the town, that would seem yeah. to be a good place. Yeah, good place for it. Um, don't be lovely. I think it's a rolling display, it's not just an advert to say that from the time you get some local yeah. information, you might get traffic news, uh, weather forecast, and all that stuff. You get connected. And, then, and they've got big screens one on the side, and then on the, on the shorter side, they've got a little tablet on. Oh, right. Okay. So it's making a lot of things. And things you can plug in. Yes, please. And why it's not the technical term. So I mean, I think it's quite a good thing. They do a heritage model. Well, <laughs> whilst I, I would love to have one, I, I think these are generic rollout jobs. <laughs> 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 We're both moving at the time. No. Yeah.
I think you are where they are, <laughs> given you've got NatWest as a flat roof uh, backdrop yeah, and the noises sure. that. <laughs> okay, are we happy with that? No. No, thank, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I'm quite happy to vote, Michael. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, my first instinct was like, really, like, uh, like, I really don't like adverts being pinned at you all the time, but and I think it asks a lot of people their opinion, young and old, and it was a mixed bag, but I think it is, you know, think with times, it's, it's inevitable. The, the fact that we can have, well, hopefully, when they talk about local authorities having an input on what goes on the screen, yeah. we will include that. So, so more information can be fed in. I think that's local information. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can object, considering that we had plans to do a similar thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. So, you know, if we had plans to do that, I mean, we could have done it with Ross and 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 can we clarify what input we will have? So, because I bet that is bound to come up with, with other council lawyers. When, when um, I had a brief chat with it, they, I think what they do is they offer a percentage of the screen time to local authority. And that would be Brecton? Uh, not necessarily, because obviously it, for them, it doesn't target the advertising to be advertising something somewhere else in Breckland. Mm -hmm. For them, the advertising is targeted at what's in Thetford. And also, I mean, for us, also importantly, is the ability to put messages up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But I guess that's that'll be sorted out by the commercial team at Breckland rather than, you know, but anything we can get on it is probably a bonus, to be fair. Have a, we do need to have a vote because we have a councillor. We have somebody who is an object. So all those in favour of our um, both objecting to the on both states the location, um, but we are on the advertiser side being a supporter. So we can have a, a vote in favour of that. And against. And it's carried then. I my sister. I do like to, you know, take a long time. You know, having a chair would be quite. <laughs> you may have to provide your own. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I prefer a bed. Uh, well, here you get one in the car. Here you do. So. <laughs> right. Moving on then to seven fifty-seven. What have we got on here? This is the one at. Rain Street, isn't it? Which we've had before. Oh, is this on? Like, is it like just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So there's a on the high fence, um, low gate. The, uh, so we did have this come up before us before. Um, I don't think we like the design, uh, the idea of the high wall or the high fence that we proposed Should before. Be, be um, so they've revised, I think, some of the design, but there's still a high wall in the front. No, because it's a relatively new um, Dave. I've that, um, it's not retrospective, is it? Any of it. And you get, I think, the fence on the gate is already in place. Okay. Thank you. That is <laughs> well, the wall's been there for years. And now I can't yeah, the small wall has, yeah. And, uh, and where there used to be an open entrance, I think, right into the, into the parking area. Which is that sliding door that they're yeah, talking about. So I think they've already installed that. So. But, but as the wall is, is over six foot tall, going back to the old measurement, because it's two metres, mm. they had to have planning permission to put up a fence that tall. Right. Anything over six foot needs planning permission. Which is why it's so they, 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 so the only comments are highways who have said that they um, think that the parking arrangements are not workable um, and consequently would probably result in a reduction of on-site parking to one vehicle. However, it's noted that the current parking provision is limited and that no on-site turning facilities exist. It's also noted that the gate and fencing are retrospective, but these replace a fence which, together with the wall, already obstructed visibility. 
taking into account the proximity to the town centre and public parking, the existence of on-street parking on the site side of Raymond Street, together with waiting restrictions on the opposite side, they consider it difficult to demonstrate the harm of an additional vehicle parking in the highway at this location. It does look quite tight if you're getting two in there, isn't it? Because I was the door. And I believe the historic building officer, if I just check here, has no objection. I think we've had a report that there's no flat roof um, addition, so we still addressed some of that with the pitch roof from the profile, both front and back. Mm -hmm. So, coins, ladies and gents. Right. Um, I, I don't feel I'm really able to get to the building as such. I'm a bit concerned about this um, fence at the front. Um, it's, a, it's a street that people walk along to get from one place to obviously to get from outside into the town. And I'm trying to find anything that makes for a boring street seems to me quite a bad thing. And the all the difference in the world between one meter, which you can see over, and two meters, which you can't. Because you just wondering what is necessary to why it's necessary to have a two, a two meter fence. Or yeah, it's in effect. Effect on certain meters. I think. What, what are they trying to hide? What are they, It just it just makes the public perambulation less interesting. Yeah, I think we've made this comment not just in this in respect of this property, but in general, the streetscape of having front gardens lower. Um, as you say, it makes you feel more roomy and a uh, spacious mm -hmm. town under them. You know, the, Walls and fences being up either side, and you you feel really hemmed in. So I think, as a council, we've made those points, and I, I think that would be worth repeating. Dennis. Yeah, and I think with the, with the fencing and everything, um, the highways did say that it, it would be restricting sight of coming out of because there's no turning in there, so they have to back out onto the road, and with the with the fence that high. Nobody would be able to see a car coming out of there until it was out. And so I think that's putting, you know, and into the danger of uh, collision on that pit. In my humble opinion, you know, you're right, the driver coming out. You're coming out back in anything. Yeah, I'll see anything until he's out. Mm -hmm. But if he, has, if he had a one metre wall there, he could look over his shoulder and see over the top of the wall and come out a lot safer than that. Not being sorry, I don't think so do we do we want to um, join in with the highways officer their comments then in terms of the the workability of it? So we're in full support of highway officer's comments. Yeah. So objector in full support objector, of highway yeah. And I think the, the idea like in terms of the, the street frontage as well, I think the objector, you know, front gardens are Fenced up to a yeah. high level, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to support the work in his view of the um, visual sense of the frontage, because I remember when I first saw that, I thought, oh, that's awful. And, um, but I'm, I'm a little, little bit strained in saying that it shouldn't be allowed, because when you look to the left and see the horrible 60s um, BT building there, which is really, I mean, the whole street is a rock of all, really. Um, but I, you know, I don't know, I don't think we should put that in the chances on it. Um, I think maybe we should say something about street scene and uh, that's a significant impact on that part of the street. Yeah. But even the BT building, that it is open. Yeah, to the at, at a low level, even yeah. though it's not greatly kept garden or anything like that, but it is still. Yeah, it's still open, isn't it? yeah. Okay, so we're rejecting on those two grounds. So, full spot of highways and also street frontage is too high, and street scene would be more appealing mm -hmm. if the walls stroke fencing were one metre and not two metre. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. We're then on to 18822, late planning. Rules. No, I haven't, I haven't no. got one, I was just teasing. So then 18922, decisions are varied. Yeah, the one we had was the football club, but I keep calling it the cricket club. I think they did put, it got uh, a problem when it was listed, and it was listed yeah. as the club, but it was actually football but So they put it through, but they didn't actually put in the decision notice any reason why they didn't go with our um, objections. So there was no explanation within mm. that for that. But that's, that's that. And then 19022 items for Great Effect Partnership. Anything to take forward? No? Okay, then on to 19122, Suffolk County Council is quarry, nothing further, presumably. <laughs> Stalled. <laughs> And then on to 19222, the parish partnership bid for 23-24. So this is the pathway along the Ford Meadow to Nuns Bridges and the small bridge that was proposed to go across. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember last year, we had two potential bids, didn't we? And we agreed one for to be delivered this year and to save the, the other one for next year because we work a, a, a year in arrears so um the plan agreed for this year was a continuation of the nuns bridges path to ford meadow and that's 25k with a 12k contribution from the town council but these are going to have to be reviewed because obviously the prices from last year mm. to this year are considerably different and also when i was talking to the highways um engineer there is a bit of an issue um, when you get from the tree next to the little bridge because the last sort of like 10 foot where they're trying to put that bridge in where the bridge square the bridge in oh sorry yeah so um so they this is going yeah so if we go across here i think there's roots issues and there might be roots issues here from mm -hmm. the trees next to the actual side of the river mm -hmm. and so the last bit they're going to have to look at um another means of doing it because they can't dig into the tree roots so it'll only it'll go to about uh, uh, well, he just said he'll have to look into uh, yeah, okay. different ways of doing it. But what they'll do is they'll stop it. I think it's about 10, 12 foot um, because of the tree roots. They can't mm. dig, they, they can't cover them over. So, um, and then we'll be looking at, yeah, next bit. So, so um, we'll have to get it recosted as well. So what I was saying is that potentially you might want to look at other projects because it may be... Quite expensive. Yes. On that, yeah. I mean that area in the winter, especially, but it's some it, it's, it's very soggy, doesn't it? So yeah. if we put a path there, we'd have to raise it up somehow above um, the ground. I don't know. Because, uh, otherwise, it'd be like the other path in the winter that gets very wet and mucky. But but he was put in yeah. Already. I mean, he was he was quite yeah. sort of like. Um, fair about putting that, you know, the rest of it in. It's just that very end bit, and obviously, I'm gonna we're gonna have to check the costs because in if I actually look at the letter for this year, because um, there is a limit on how much it can cost. So I wait for updates. So I, I, I know that we've agreed that we want to move forward with this one if possible, but it just may be a good idea to perhaps have some other ideas in the bag in, in case with the current situation it's too expensive to be a Paris partnership scheme. Things have changed. Can, can I ask, um, I, I'm, I very much like this as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an idea. I think it would add to the general ability of people to walk around our wonderful rivers. Yeah. Um, which is a problem at point A. I wonder whether we might just simply omit that bit altogether and start on the bridge, uh, beyond the bridge, so to speak, because you, you can't access it from, uh, from the road itself. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mm. And then we would have a bit of money to spend if we need to in dealing with Dennis. It's quite a legitimate problem, but uh, the fact that it, it means a bit of raising or a bit of care mm. in planning to prevent it being sold in winter. Because nice. um, I think what I need to do is to get um, uh, Jack back and chat to him about where we stand on it this year, really. And if if you're still happy, that's where we want to go. He, he may be able to advise us of any any changes to that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, the bridge at point A was uh, the advantage of that to get people off the road mm. uh, for safety reasons. But I think if, the, if uh, the costs are going to cause a problem, um, then it would be good to look up at least to impart of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe may we can go, um, like Mike says, take it to the road, and we might be able to afford that bit and not, not do the bit from A down to the uh, existing part. Yeah. So, um, so I'll ask him to come over yeah, and review. Maybe we'll need some options. Mm -hmm. So can I just ask that point B, which is obviously where the bridge is? Mm -hmm. Did I read that we were looking to um, put a new bridge there, or was that only yeah, uh, point A? Well, the, the town council was looking to have to pay for a bridge, which will be additional to the parish partnership scheme. Yeah, that's the that's that's point A, though, isn't it? No, the additional that's bridge, but I mean, where the bridge is. I think we we talk about B. We were talking about having to replace that at some time just for making it. Well, we, the way that it's been eroded away, it's so it's probably well, yeah, last we, we, now maybe the time. But I think uh, the, the bridge at what the A was never costed into this, was it? No, it's an that, additional. That additional that's thing that's we, yeah. yeah. We're hoping to put in at some time. So my concern is, if we're looking to put a bridge at B, we haven't fully addressed the bridge. Yeah. Are we causing ourselves more problems because we we've right. still got this business with even if we maintain the temporary repair to a more medium term repair, that it doesn't really give you the surety for the bridge foundations what we've got there at the moment. Mm -hmm. And if you do a complete over engineer of it, um if you continue to keep it flowing without solving the problem by putting your fish parts in, uh, I think you put yourself at risk of your asset being undermined. Yeah. I don't think you're going to have any clarity about what's going to happen at the breach of this meeting. No, 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 no but I uh, just someone to go down the route of saying, well, we're going to put a bridge in here, but we haven't addressed what's going to happen. So perhaps we could arrange something for you and I to meet Jack. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite happy to meet Jack. Mm -hmm. and, and get an update so, on this year's one as well, because obviously at some point they're going to be digging down there for. Um, the electrics as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, am, I, am I ask any any type of community payback coming forward with the uh, electrics? Have we heard? No. I don't think the electrics work and interfere physically. No, I think. No, but I, I'm just wondering if, to have the same time. Or if you could get if they're on site oh, yeah. and yeah. actually yeah. do a little bit of the work as a community yeah. payback, which would save us all the money. Yeah. Well, I was trying to direct them towards a hard standing for mm. um, working on it in progress. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the next stage is to. Read Jack, see what is feasible. In terms of deadlines for the parish partnerships, usually by it's November time, yeah. isn't it, that we have to you know, yeah. finalise everything. So we've got a little bit of time to, to work up, but obviously conscious of costs um, and what limits we can go to. So we aim to. Can we get it? Um, we 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 get it to, um, What's that? See, Jack. Uh, well, I guess it depends where we can get him over. Yeah. I mean, but we've got until December. Yeah, okay. Well, We'll try and address the next future meeting. Yeah, it would be good to involve uh, uh, Terry and Jane as they've got a pot of money and sometimes they're different to it. For, <laughs> if, if we haven't got enough money, I, I, I Terry, couldn't but, possibly no, but we might, coerce might, them. It might be nice to ask. It's only a phrase that's a difficult. Um, obviously, yes. <laughs> yeah. So that might want to be there on the inside. Just to see. Yeah. Okay. So now on to 19322, Carnegie. Oh, sorry, Dan. Uh, Tim's saying you might want to have a few backup plans in. 
Mm. Well, it's that little one that Tesco's yeah. round about to the garden centre entry. Yes, yeah, so something that. So maybe if we speak to Jack when he's over to get a, even just yep. get a costing for it. Yeah. Um, so. Is that in our perimeter still? Well, it's not, that fall into Kilberston? I think. I think, it falls yeah, into Kilberton. I think Kilston Lane is the boundary now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not actually out yet. It's still in this. Not ours yet. <laughs> not till next May. But it's still a Norfolk. Um, County Council Parish Partnership. Yeah. So we presumably yeah. could technically yeah. pay for it even if it wasn't in our package because it would be a benefit to Thetford residents. To By the time they do it, it might be in our patch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the best thing is to just ask. Yeah. We'll get a mail from them. Yeah. We'll ask what the art of the possible is. Okay. Did we get that um, drop curb queen down near the roundabout on the Abbey? The Red Castle. That, that, the drop curb is in, yeah. Oh, good. Because I know there's one of my phone numbers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So 193, 22, can't leave you with tender. Yes. So um, basically, I've, I've put it through onto um, this one because it's about time and um, if we approve it I hope to get them up on the roof within a matter of days <laughs> I'm kind of yeah before it rains <laughs> yeah. so that's where we're going so um, I set out the report from the architect um, and they wrote the spec and they um, put it um, out we put it on the contractor's website they were looking for people who could meet a certain spec I'm just trying to find the oh yeah so um, they, they had a specific specification of the roofing system and that went out and um, they, we sent all the stuff to the architect and he went through everybody's tenders and made sure that they all fitted the specification that was required for, uh, to get the roof done. So um, this is what it came back at with his recommendation being tender number three. But also, this has a defects liability of six months, and um, the recommended tender is within 8% of the estimate, which is good, under 8%. And it also included a 5,000 um, contingency sum. So he has looked at the tenders, and uh, the lowest tender has been examined in detail uh, everything on it is correct and it fits the specification and therefore um, he would recommend that we go for number three. Thanks. Yes, well, uh, I mean, it's nice to have all the information up there, but uh, um, it has been a bit of a while since we last looked at the tenders and, and did them when, when, when I was one of the people included in that. No, this tender was literally, we opened it this we opened it on the 21st of June. Yeah, I think you right. were there as open. Yeah, you were here, yeah. Yeah. No, 21st right. of June, yeah. Um, and, and I didn't really, time is of the essence. And the good thing with that then is as soon as we've got that in play, yeah. we can then go back and look at the um, solar package mm -hmm. and we can get that done. And then if council agree with that, which whichever parts they want to do, we can get a works board loan, which normally takes about two days. Can I propose that we accept that change? Proposal and second. Mine. All those in favour of accepting proposal three. Yeah. Carry. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. So I can tell them tomorrow. So so hopefully we can we can really crack on with that and, and potentially have it in place. Soon, because we uh, were very fortunate in that we managed to cap our prices about just about 18 months ago. So I think our prices are capped until next September, October. And then uh, the problem is, is obviously um, the, the gap is going to be painful. So it would be good to have something in place that's going to reduce those. Mm -hmm. um, costs and the reason we're allowed to go for solar is that the savings 
that we get from the seller will pay for the loan because it has to be something that you can prove you're going to get the money back. They won't just give you the money and, and yeah. So so that's, if we can move that along, that'd be good. And if nothing else, it'll stop all the rain coming in over the winter, which has got to be a bonus. <laughs> I think your heating in the, certainly the main hall is, is an air conditioning system. In the main hall, yeah. Yeah, so that, that should be a massive saving. So, um, but, but, exactly, <laughs> but, but also, because um, we could get batteries, we've got the room to put batteries on the roof. Oh, okay. And also, because of the depth of our joists, well, we can potentially put insulation on the mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. Which would make a massive difference as well. That's good. So, um, but I'm going to price it up the different stages because it's obviously the Carnegie Guild Hall, Stroke British Legion, Shambles. So, but we can have a look at what all of those are. Yeah. So one nine four twenty two community officers update. No, I think that's one nine five twenty two community engagement. What part on that front? Yeah, yeah. Call the meeting to a close. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We do have one in August, yeah. It's the only, it's the only one planning. The other meetings, um, 